Katie Hobbs joins me now. And I know you have actually a form tonight, correct? Yes. Uh, with the, is it the Arizona Chamber or Maricopa Chamber? It's Arizona Chamber of Commerce, yep. Um, why not go one, let, I wanna get this process out of the way. I, I understand her experience doing this. Look, it, I get that. But sometimes those are the breaks. Why not debate her one-on-one? -on -one? Look, there is nothing I would like more than a substantive debate on the issues and an opportunity to contrast the robust policy uh, positions that my campaign has put out versus Carrie Lake's lack of any position on anything or plans or solutions. Uh, and we are still talking to the debate organizers about how to make that work. But Carrie Lake is a spectacle and she made a spectacle during the GOP primary debate and um, they so far haven't proposed a format that's gonna change that. And it put Arizona uh, as the butt of national jokes, and I don't want to participate in that. Is there, how about a Lincoln Douglas style, no moderator, mm -hmm. where somebody basically says, okay, the issue is abortion. You start first, three minutes, now you three minutes. Would I, you be willing to do something like that? Well, I, we're, we're willing to, to come to a compromise on a format that allows for a substantive discussion. Let me ask about this larger issue. What, what do you, if, if we didn't have the issue of Donald Trump and election denialism basically just soaking up the attention, certainly yes. national. What would you be running on as governor? Uh, I am someone who is a born and raised Arizonan, and I have spent the campaign the last year plus on the campaign trail talking to Arizonans about issues they're concerned about, issues that our leaders have kicked the can down the road on for a long time, our water crisis, fixing public education, uh, affordability is, is on voters' minds, and we need leaders who are going to address those issues, bring people together to solve these problems. These aren't Democrat or Republican problems. They are Arizona problems that need Arizona solutions. And uh, I'm running to bring the leadership that we need to, to tackle those issues. All of that, that, that sounds like a, 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 an interesting top line. So let me dig in on one of them, education. What does that mean? What is it that you wanna do to the public education system here that hasn't been done? Every Arizona student deserves access to high quality public education, no matter where they live in our state. And we've continued to take resources away from public education, divert them into voucher schemes that don't create equal opportunity for all students in our state. We need robust investment in public education, starting with preschool all the way through post-secondary education. And um, we need to focus on how we attract and retain qualified teachers because we're, we're losing them uh, every day in our classrooms. Some charter schools here are run by the public school systems. Where do you, where do you put charter schools in this conversation? Our, our, our charter schools are public schools. What you'll see from me is a call for more accountability mm -hmm. um, and some of the same requirements that other public schools have. Um, so, so they are part of the conversation of public schools um, uh, and, and they need more accountability. What is that? With the charter schools themselves, themselves with the accountability, is that what you feel like is missing? Uh, yeah, yeah. And, and that's built into the system. A lot of this, the hoops that public, regular traditional public schools have to jump through, um, charter schools don't have the same responsibilities. All right, let's talk about the water crisis because you, you come here and you can't help but wonder, this is an extraordinarily fast growing area. Yeah, yep. And, you know, I keep wondering, when are you going to tell us you can't come? <laughs> well, I, and we have to balance our, our growth with the needs that we have. And um, we've kicked the can down the road for a long time on water. And so we need decisive and aggressive action now. Um, we need to put innovative ideas on the table for how we aggressively conserve water, how we um, can look at ways to increase our water supply. What's and, in one idea in conserving water that you think can, that the public can do is there like financial incentives you know if you if you do if you conserve water a certain much you can get a discount on your bill or, or what, what do you think certainly that's an idea um i think we need to look at larger scale um bartlett dam which is on the verde river system they just increased their capacity um that water system is pretty healthy relative to looking at colorado and so um some of the things that have worked there and and with colorado we really need to do more partnership with the with the basin states because we're not in this alone in Arizona. Um, another issue besides the election that has, I would argue, sort of been thrown on top mm -hmm. is the abortion issue. Yeah. So you tell me, what role do you believe the, go the, the, the position of governor will play here in this debate in the state of Arizona? Well, um, what's clear is that the governor in Arizona is going to be the last line of defense to protect any remaining abortion rights we have left. And there's uncertainty right now. Uh, the, we'll have a court decision in a couple weeks on the 
Civil War era complete ban on abortion, right. uh, whether that injunction is going to be lifted or not, and that that's what Arizonans are under. Um, during my time in the legislature, I fought back against the increased restrictions on abortion access, and I'll continue to do that as governor and certainly veto anything new that comes to my desk. If you're like the governor, you're going to have a Republican legislature, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's hard to imagine the way it's gerrymandered right. and all this stuff. I understand that. Um, you're going to want to put in some protection on abortion rights. Yeah. But there's only going to be so far you can get a Republican legislature to do. Are you prepared to end, end up signing something in the law that you today couldn't support, you know, whether it's 15 weeks or something like that? Uh, well, we do have a 15-week ban that um, uh, will go in effect. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, um, so, no, I'm not prepared to sign any new restrictions. Uh, certainly, um, in Arizona, we have a robust initiative process, and that is absolutely an option for voters. And if we had had more time um, this cycle, we could have got something on the ballot this cycle. And is that what you think is the, the road you'd like to see Arizona go down? Is it a referendum in 2024? Uh, I, I think that's going to be necessary, yes. Um, you're the Secretary of State right now. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people in this state for various reasons that question the integrity of these elections. Mm -hmm. How do you guarantee to the state of Arizona this is going to be a free and fair election? Um, this is going to be a free and fair election just like 2020 was. Uh, we have rules and laws in place that were followed and are continuing to be followed. Um, we have election officials who are committed to the integrity of the process and they will continue to be. And every single allegation that was made about um, the integrity of the election was not true and, and allegations that are continuing to be made. Are you prepared for what Carrie Lake's likely to do? We saw what she did before the primary, it's, where she questioned the results before the ballots came in. Yeah, it's absolutely clear that that is the playbook she's playing out of and she's going to do it again, and we are absolutely prepared. Um, final thing, last night, and these independent voters I talked to, they feel disenfranchised. Mm -hmm. They feel shut out from yeah. the process. They'd certainly like to see top two, top four, something like that that allowed independents full access to the primary process with that, with, and, and stay independent. Can you support something like that? Uh, I think that's a, a discussion I'll be focused on after this election. I, there's folks trying to bring it to the ballot in 24. Um, certainly, I, I expect a lot of robust conversations about it. This is, not everybody inside the party wants this, correct? Is that in, um, in the Democratic I party? haven't really talked to anyone in the party about it uh, recently, so I'm not sure where folks are at, but I know that, um, Independents are a huge segment of our voting population, and we should be working to enfranchise them. All right. Katie Hobbs, the Democratic nominee for governor, the current Secretary of State, which many people may not realize is actually next in line to be governor uh, on that front. Katie Hobbs, stay safe on the trail. Thank you so much. Nice to see you. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.